Hi, everyone, and welcome to yet another webinar from the team at Cooperative Systems. My name is Dave Scott, and I work on the marketing team here at Cooperative Systems. And today we have Sean Terry talking a little bit about why having one IT guy or one IT resource managing your technology infrastructure and how it could be hurting your business. So a few parking lot items before we get started today. This webinar is being recorded and we will be uploading it to not only YouTube, but our different social media channels as well. So if you want to find us on the web, just go to coopsys, C-O-O-P-S-Y-S.com and you'll be able to get access to our YouTube channel and our social media pages from there. If you want to go directly to YouTube, just go to YouTube and type in cooperative systems in the search taskbar. And if you want to do the same on social media, just go to Facebook or LinkedIn where you can find us online there as well. And that's where this recording among many other educational webinars will be housed and stored. So today, Today we have Sean Terry. He's the Director of Business Development here at Cooperative Systems. And Sean is going to walk us through how having one IT guy or one IT resource can be hurting your business. So Sean, with that said, take it away. Thanks, Dave. Um, uh, as Dave said, I am part of the business development team here. And uh, Dave, I'd like to thank you for putting this together today. Um, and as Dave mentioned, we're going to be touching on why having one IT guy run your technology infrastructure could very well be hurting your business without you even knowing it. Uh, so just a quick agenda overview of today's um, content. First, we'll explore exactly how you can determine whether or not uh, your existing IT resources is overwhelmed. And then we'll dive in and take a look at a few of the different signs that are indicative of poorly managed IT infrastructure. Uh, and then finally, we're going to wrap it up by providing some guidance and direction on what you should be doing instead. So our first section here, how do you know if your IT resource is overwhelmed? Uh, so this statement right here, technology was invented to make your life easier. It is an asset that should help you to propel your business into the future rather than being a drag. Uh, so as you read that statement on the screen, ask yourself how it sits with you. Uh, do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Uh, do you see it as a factual statement as it pertains to your organization currently? Uh, or do you kind of just roll your eyes and uh, maybe even start laughing a little bit to yourself? Um, you know, if it's, the, if it's the latter, I can assure you that you're definitely not alone. Um, but with this in mind, we're going to show you what you can do about it uh, to ensure that down the road, if you were to be asked this or, or be asked to read this again, um, you know, your takeaway would be drastically different. So how do you know if your IT resource is overwhelmed? Uh, so there's a few things that can be indicative um, that something less than ideal is going on with your internal IT resource. Uh, so while these items on their own may not necessarily be caused to rehaul your entire IT infrastructure, um, you know they, they can certainly serve as good indicators uh, or red flags of a larger underlying issue that really needs to be uncovered and identified prior to any improvements or solutions being implemented. Uh, so it, go, if we just move along here, take the first one, your technology becomes a drag, not an asset. So simply stated, are your systems causing you problems, headaches? Um, on any given day, are you complaining about how slow something is? Maybe you can't access certain applications. Uh, is your laptop crashing multiple times throughout the day? Maybe your VPN's logging you off every other time you connect. You know, I think it's safe to say that we've all experienced our, our fair share of IT being a drag. But I ask you to think about the flip side of that, because that's a considerably smaller number of us who have really experienced well-designed, well-built and maintained infrastructure. And unfortunately, we're entering a period within the business world at large where, you know, having those highly functioning, expertly designed and built IT infrastructure systems and, and setups isn't necessarily a competitive advantage, but really the minimum required to be competitive in the first place. Um, so if we look at the next one, your team isn't productive like they should be. Again, that's another fairly straightforward observation, but one that can be improved exponentially through technology if done properly. Uh, your customer satisfaction declines. So while it's normal to have some peaks and valleys, if you will, uh, as it relates to your client or customer satisfaction levels, having a consistent range is where we all want to be. Uh, so things, uh, as we all know, when things really, when they work properly internally, that output reflects that. And the last one on this slide, your, finally, your inefficiency is costing you money, affecting morale. Uh, so this really incorporates the three previous lines. 
Uh, IT inefficiencies, if you think about it, are, are very similar to dominoes. One cause an, it causes an issue with another, and then it's compounded by another issue that then affects both of those previous items, et cetera, so on and so forth. I do want to mention, um, and if you'd like to hear more about this afterwards, please connect with me. Uh, but we employ a methodology both internally and with our clients called IT Operational Maturity Level. Uh, what it is, it's a series of assessment questions uh, and, and um, uh, traits that really reveals cur your current standing or current posture in a multitude of areas from operations, scalability, governance and controls, vendor alignment, overall business value, and things of that nature. And what it does, it gives you a, a baseline metric and shows us exactly where to focus the ongoing efforts and improvements throughout the working relationship. So just because something doesn't do what you planned it to do doesn't mean it's useless. So Mr. Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb, who failed repeatedly until he didn't. I really like this quote as it speaks to never giving up on a vision. You know, if you have a, a specific vision of, of great IT infrastructure supporting your organization so you can get back to business and focus on operating and running your organization, we may just be the right trusted advisor for you to work with. Um, just know that there's always room for improvement, especially when you're dealing with IT. So let's move into five signs of poorly managed IT infrastructure. Uh, while there are certainly more than five indicators, uh, these are some of the major ones that we tend to see frequently. Your business has network security and data security gaps and issues. So with this, maybe you have unpatched third-party software running on your production network, uh, or you have outdated infrastructure in general that may not be receiving you know, the proper updates, proper support, Possibly you're looking at a scenario where you have out of date applications and or devices. Uh, so anytime something like that is identified, there's a good chance that, that the management of that technology should be addressed or looked at. Your business has backup issues, i.e. you're not doing it properly or at all. Um, so what's the current state of your backup and disaster recovery solution? Do you have one? Uh, when's the last time it was tested? Is it outdated? Is it with the times? Or are you, are you still manually downloading data onto a device that you take home with you at the end of each day or at the end of each week? Uh, so simply stated, with the threat landscape continuing to expand and evolve, we need to be extremely cautious of where our data is going, when it's going there, and ensure proper backups both on and off site. Um, also in terms of best practices, it's commonly accepted within the industry to test your backup systems at least once a year. Uh, and also anytime there's considerable change to the organization or technology infrastructure. So inefficiency from too much paper and poor document management. So uh, another one that's kind of self-explanatory, we all have seen this person in the office um, and sometimes it's a generational thing, but other times it can really be an indicator that the systems are not functioning properly. Um, you know, there's lag, there's delay. Um, just a clear sign that something is amiss when you start to see tons and tons of paper all over the place, the sticky notes, this, that. Uh, definitely a good sign to, uh, to take a look under the hood. No documented IT plan or strategy. So this is something that many small and medium-sized business owners fail to account for. Um, and we tend to see this with organizations that fail to document other important policies and procedures unrelated to IT or IT infrastructure. Uh, so in order for an organization to improve its efficiency, they must become standardized, uh, implementing documented, repeatable processes that can be continuously updated, uh, amended, and improved as that organization grows and changes. Uh, so Cooperative Systems also works closely with cyber risk and uh, security and compliance organizations to help you really put the pen to paper and build out, create, and expand uh, any needed policies and procedures that are lacking. Um, so this is an area that, that you're, not, you're not on top of, you don't have in place. Um, definitely connect with me after and we can point you in the right direction. 
confusion around your cloud environment. So the confusion here we're referring to is the question surrounding, should I have public cloud? Uh, should I have a, a, a private cloud um, solution or should I have a hybrid of the two? And now what should you do instead? So for starters, certainly exploring outsourced IT services, uh, also commonly referred to as managed IT services, which is really a relationship with a trusted IT company who handles and manages your business technology and environment. Um, if you wanna compare it to a larger organization, say a thousand plus employees, they'll typically have a large internal IT department, which is responsible for you know, a wide variety of systems, networks, and, and other hardware requirements and demands to ensure that that corporation's infrastructure can accommodate the uh, massively demanding workloads, you know, day in and day out without going offline. Um, and that's exactly what an MSP like cooperative systems can provide for its small and medium sized clients. Um, however, at, you know, less or, or equal to what you typically pay for an internal IT resource. So specifically here, um, partnering with an MSP managed services firm or MSP, as I just mentioned, who has your industry knowledge and experience. Um, so it, it's very important that who, which, whichever MSP you ultimately end up working with, just make sure that they have good experience in the industry that you're operating. Um, you know, we have, uh, while we, we, we will work with any industry out there, uh, however, from past clients, uh, past experience, we, we do have a heavy concentration of manufacturing, automotive, healthcare, financial services, and insurance firms. Um, and, you know, by default, like I said, our industries that we have a great deal of experience in, uh, just from our, our, our time with those, those clients on board. So uh, one thing I would like to mention is it's very important that whichever MSP you ultimately partner with, make sure they don't see you as a trial run. Um, and there are some certain questions that you can ask to determine that and feel free to, to connect with me after I can kind of, again, point you in the right direction on that. Implement a virtual CIO or virtual CIO, uh, virtual uh, VCIO or virtual CIO, sorry, uh, who will act and serve just as your current building or business CIO, only at a fraction of the cost uh, with more experience, more resources, and who's, who has the ability to work 24-7, 365. Um, which to the best of my knowledge, I am not aware of any human being that's able to do that just yet. Um, so ensuring proactive monitoring and maintenance that maximize, maximizes security, minimizes downtime. Uh, committed to your employee, to keeping your employees data and network safe from cybersecurity threats. So here making sure you have employee security training implemented as a best practice, um, you know, you're really only as strong as your weakest link. And then some of the other things to consider implementing would be, you know, a managed patching solution, improved endpoint protections. So your antivirus, your anti-malware, uh, your anti-ransomware, anti-rootkit, uh, your DNS filtering. Uh, also ensuring your licensing and security subscriptions are actively managed and up to date. Uh, proper security appliances. And again, you can't stress it enough, but having a strong multi-location backup and disaster recovery solution in place uh, is an absolute must in 2021. Um, assessing whether or not a, a cloud technologies make sense for your business, um, or if maybe a hybrid infrastructure of 50-50 or, or some combination of the two uh, would work best for you. We own our own data center in Manchester, Connecticut. So that gives us the ability to provide truly customized virtual private cloud experiences for, for our clients. Uh, we also have co-location options available at another center, as well as fully hosted Citrix environments, which are truly agile and able to be accessed from anywhere in the world. <clears throat> so focus on working with a company that can provide you with visibility and control over your IT investment. So you really can't get better visibility or control over your data and assets uh, than partnering with an MSP that owns their own data center. Uh, I am not familiar with, with other MSPs of our size that own their own data center in this area. There might be, I, 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 have, not, um, I have not heard that just yet, but um, it is very rare for an MSP of our size to have our own. Uh, and the flexibility that it gives us is, is second to none. Um, also aligning your defined IT strategy with your business goals. So 
The first step in our, for, our formal client engagement process is the technology assessment and business discovery. So while the IT infrastructure is extremely important, um, equally as important is the business discovery. So in order for us to be able to help anyone, we must have a full clear picture of who they are, where they are now, where they're looking to go in say one, three, five years. Um, and then at that point is when we're able to make recommendations that are firmly grounded in those overarching goals and objectives. And if you look at, um, we are huge on planning, uh, creation of a budget as part of strategic planning along with a one, three, five year technology roadmap. So cooperative systems, we are extremely big on planning. We wanna avoid surprises both on your end and on our end. And then no downtime with stable IT infrastructure designed with a strong security posture. Again, um, um, the, the common theme that we're seeing here of that reducing downtime, maximizing uptime really can't be understated. So what are, your, what are our peers saying about this approach? I just have a few uh, testimonials and a few comments from our, from our client base. Uh, here, as a technology company, I see the importance of investing in technology to ensure remote work productivity and performance. Uh, this is Ray over at Conveco. Conveco is a manufacturer that we onboarded in the early COVID-19 days, essentially 100% remotely. Uh, they had an internal team that was leaving to take on new, new opportunity, uh, and rather than replace them, elected to outsource their IT operations to cooperative systems. Uh, Ray placed a very heavy importance on remote accessibility so they could continue to grow during this period of uncertainty, um, you know, in electing a proactive approach rather than just sitting back to see what the, uh, the market would dictate. Our processing time decreased 50% with end of day processing being cut in half from eight minutes per report to about five. We saw really good efficiencies created from cooperative systems process. So another great client who's really streamlined their operations uh, by becoming more standardized. Uh, and as a result of that initial project work to standardize, uh, we now manage them going forward monthly um, and 24 seven, 365, which has given them the ability to focus on other initiatives uh, and really focus their time on running and operating the organization. Cooperative systems fixed our IT struggles and allowed us to grow and scale because of the upgrades they guided us through. So we're a huge proponent of designing and building efficient and agile infrastructure. We know that the majority of businesses out there are looking to grow and scale. So why not properly position their technology to accommodate that growth effortlessly and seamlessly? Uh, so now rather than uh, you know, having to take their, their entire systems offline, um, say anytime they wanted to add resources to, uh, to a server or something like that, uh, they no longer have to do it, which was really just a fraction of what uh, we've done for, for the Magnatech environment. Cooperative systems learned about our business, learned how we operated and, that we, and what we needed. They then designed a total solution that was designed specifically for us. So this quote is possibly my favorite. It's one of the best quotes re re received as feedback as it really does a great job of summarizing in a couple sentences exactly, exactly what our approach to new opportunities is. Really aim to understand and then provide guidance once we do. So that concludes today's presentation. Uh, I hope you were able to take some of the points that we just went through uh, and are already asking yourself some of the needed questions and thinking about, you know, does my current approach seem or feel sufficient? Uh, is having one person actually helping your business run more efficiently or is it hindering and creating more issues? I hope some of the points here today will help you answer that question. Uh, and also just a reminder, again, that we do own our own data center. Um, if you have not had an assessment to determine best use case for you as it, um, you know, as it, as it applies to, to data services, definitely let me know. Um, and we can take a look to determine whether or not cloud hosted technologies are a good fit for your business. Uh, while they do make a lot of sense for, for a lot of people, uh, there are times that, it, that, that a hybrid might be necessary or that it just doesn't make sense. So uh, that first step is having that, that uh, assessment to determine that. And uh, Sean, that's yeah. awesome. So we'll open it up for some questions. Dave, how are we looking? Yeah, no, it's, this is awesome. Thanks for the presentation. Such good knowledge and wisdom. We've got a few questions. Um, we have a question from Don. Don asks, if our 
existing IT person needs help, do you provide services to help them? Good question. Good question. Um, you say, Don? It is. Um, we can, yep. Don, we, we certainly can. Uh, so what you're speaking to is what we would refer to as co-managed services. Um, and to be honest with you, we are seeing a decent bit of this right now. Uh, I think the reason for that is simply due to a lot of internal IT resources or even small internal teams are having an increasingly difficult time staying current on all of the new IT related innovations uh, and a rapid rate of tech advancements. Um, so it's just happening as, you know, it's, it's at such a rapid rate these days uh, that unless you're working in and around all of these systems and applications and constantly training, you know, it's tough to stay, to stay up. So, um, you know, we're seeing situations where a company will come to us and we'll end up working on, say, their backend items or specific point solutions. So maybe they just need a backup a disaster recovery solution, uh, or maybe they need a, a managed patching solution. Uh, so we'll implement those items while their internal team uh, handles and puts out, say, day-to-day -day fires, uh, handles end user requests, et cetera. Um, also, uh, this is a realistic first step when moving from strictly internal resources to more of an outsource model uh, as it, it kind of incorporates elements of both. So a natural first step for organizations that are looking to ultimately outsource eventually. Awesome. Love it. That's a great question, Don. Uh, somebody asks about the technology and cloud assessment, and they said, what does it cover? So our assessment and discovery process. Um, so our, our data center and our assessment basically covers everything. So let me run through real quick. Our, dis our assessment discovery process is really one of the things that differentiates us from other MSPs. Um, so while the technology assessment is extremely important, here are cooperative systems equally as important as the business discovery. Um, so we will evaluate your entire IT infrastructure thoroughly uh, in a roughly 60, 70 hour engagement from start to finish. We'll go through your servers, your switches, your access points, uh, your email systems, your telecom systems, internal connections, uh, your VPN, users, workstations, et cetera, with a fine tooth comb. Uh, concurrently, we'll be meeting with staff members at, at various levels of seniority to get a full picture of how technology is currently used, any issues you might be having, any historical uses. Um, and then we'll go through what's called an IT OML or operational maturity level assessment, which focuses on various business related areas such as operations, scalability, et cetera. Um, this, uh, we also establish a clear picture of your organizational needs, uh, where you're looking to go one, three, five years, any growth, are you open to acquisition, et cetera. So once that business discovery and technology assessment's been completed, we'll then provide you with a full written report, deliver a presentation, uh, and we really ensure that all of those rec recommendations are firmly in line with your overarching goals and objectives. Love it. The assessments are so big. I feel like they help us get a better understanding of the struggles and pain points that our clients and prospects are, cover are struggling with so that we know what to cover them when we engage with them further. That's exactly the thought behind it, Dave. Yep. Awesome. Um, the other question is a pretty simple one. Do you own, it sounds like you own your own data center, correct? Yes, we do. Yeah, we recently acquired another MSP that uh, gave us our own data center over in Manchester, Connecticut. Um, Very so that cool. gives us the ability to offer truly customizable cloud experience along with public cloud solutions and also hybrid. Love it. Awesome. The other question is, we struggle with our tech support, our IT support. Do we get, does Cooperative Systems provide us with a dedicated account manager? In short, yes, we do. Um, you'll have a dedicated account manager. Um, you'd be in great hands with any of our account managers that all have uh, great experience in the industry. Um, so when, an, say, an end user has an issue, there's one number for them to call, and they'd be working with the same tech to resolve that issue. Uh, but for the main point of contact within your organization, for any upcoming changes, anything like that, your account manager is dedicated, and that is your one person to connect with. Love it. Those are great questions. Such great questions. Sean, I think that's it for now. Um, we'll give everybody just another 30 seconds to ask any last lingering questions that you might have. But until then, Sean, if people want to get a hold of you to better understand how we can serve them in terms of helping their IT resource become more efficient and lean, how can they do that? Dave, they can uh, reach me at, I just put the slide up, um, at S. Terry. T is in Tom, E-R-R-Y, at coopsys.com, or you can reach me directly at 860-768-3022.
Awesome. And there's no other questions at this point, Sean. So we will adjourn and let everybody get the rest of their morning and afternoon back. But Sean, man, this has been such a good spend of my time. I hope it has been for you as well. Yeah, it definitely has. I always, always love doing this. I really, again, thanks for putting this on, Dave. Yep. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining us today, Sean. Thanks for the time and we will see everyone soon. See you guys later. <laughs>